Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the potting table. I have some new seeds to start. We are doing winter squash and pumpkin and beets. I'm gonna start those now. Come join me. So, like I said, we are doing uh, pumpkins and other winter squash and some beets. Um, all of these are the same ones that I did last year. Hopefully I'll have a better <laughs> a better crop this year. Uh, I am starting the winter squash pumpkins and stuff earlier uh, by about a month. So uh, also our weather's a little milder. So I'm thinking I can get them in the ground a little sooner than I did last year. We'll see how it goes. Um, but for my beet selection, I've got Burpees Golden, Bull's Blood, Detroit Dark Red, and Early Blood Turnip. That's a beet, not a turnip. For pumpkins... I got it's a big stack. I got to put this down. Uh, so I'm doing Big Max pumpkins again. Um, I've already actually started those. I did that with the kids earlier today. So I did want to open this up and show you these seeds. Big Max large pumpkin, 120 days to maturity, open pollinated, because they are giant pumpkin seeds. Look at that. Look at those seeds. These are big pumpkins. Not big enough to compete in giant pumpkin contests, but certainly sufficient for exhibiting in your county fair or displaying as an awesome jack-o'-lantern. Typically weighs 50 to 100 pounds and measures up to 70 inches in circumference. So I'm starting four of those this year. I did not have very good germination last year, uh, and the one pumpkin plant that I did get and transplant out um, didn't produce, along with everything else that didn't produce. My pumpkins were sad last year. Okay, moving on. I have a Waltham butternut squash. My one butternut. I have a carnival squash. That's an acorn. Ooh. I have this naked bear pumpkin. So these are small pumpkins uh, and I am growing them mainly for their seeds, for pumpkin seeds, less so for the actual pumpkin flesh. Let me show you. So these seeds, oh, come here. Let me do they don't have the usual pumpkin seed skin on them. So they are uh, a little bit easier for like fresh eating or dried eating or whatever. So that's the naked bear, grown mainly for its seed. Come back here. This is a long pie pumpkin. So these are really long sort of column shaped pumpkins that are sweet and tasty for things like pies. I'm doing a Hubbard squash. Those are big blue pumpkin-y looking things. Um, it would be great to get some uh, squash out of that, but also they, uh, they're they supposed to be a really good trap crop. So, or an indicator crop or something. Uh, I'm starting my honey boat squash now. This is a delicata. Uh, I tried starting it along with my uh, summer squash, but it's... Um, it actually takes longer than that. It's 90 to 100 days, so I figured I'm going to start it now uh, with my winter squash. We have a Long Island cheese pumpkin. That's a really good storage pumpkin. Diablo pumpkin. This is a classic orange jack-o'-lantern type. Also the cornfield pumpkin, classic orange, jack-o'-lantern type. And we've got the winter lux, the winter luxury. This is um, a medium-sized sweet pie pumpkin. So good times. And that is what I'm starting today. Hope you can enjoy that. And please, <laughs> please send me some luck. I got, I got nothing last year out of all of the 
squash that I started. They just were just decimated. Okay, so you can see I've got my seed trays all ready to go with the tags. I'm just going to sow some seeds, maybe chat with you a little bit. Hope that sounds good. All right, let's start with these beets. What do we have here? Burpees Golden. Now, in a beet seed, there's actually two seeds in there. It's really like a pod with two seeds in there. Uh, and uh, I think that I'm going to actually plant two in each spot. So it's possible if I got germination of all of them um, that I would get... Uh, pull those back in there. Then I would get um, four <laughs> plants in each little spot. But we'll see. These are basically going to go straight from here into the ground. So beet seeds need to go in about a half an inch. I'm getting them in there. Okay, so basically I'm going to make my holes and then tap the seeds one at a time. Burpee's Golden oh. Beet, a standout beet offering both excellent roots and sweet flavor, flavorful edible greens that are ideal for sauteing. Introduced in 1970 by Burpee Seed Company. It has an orange globe-shaped roots that turn golden yellow when cooked and are tender and mild flavored, even when large, and will not bleed like red beets. 50 to 55 days. And then I'll go back and put in the ones that I missed. Because I definitely missed the hole a couple of times here. Press them in. And cover them up. And that's the process. And we do that just about a million times more. Make holes, half an inch, which is really not as deep as you think it is. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of these. Okay, early blood. They look like beet seeds. And in they go. Maybe, if they ever come out. There we go. Early blood turnip beet. Available as early as 1825 from seedsmen such as Sinclair and Moore of Baltimore, Maryland. Good all-purpose variety with dark red flesh that is sweet, crisp, and tender. Excellent market and home variety for summer and autumn use. Now relatively rare. 48 to 68 days. Detroit Dark Red. Detroit Dark Red Beet. Great for canning and fresh eating. This variety is a good keeper, producing round, blood red, three inch diameter roots. This historic variety was introduced in 1892 by D.M. Ferry and Company. Original selections were made from the early blood turnip beet by Mr. Reeves of Port Hope, Ontario, Canada. 60 to 65 days. The bull's blood beet. I'm gonna have to get some more of these seeds. The bull's blood beet. A cool weather plant that is as ornamental as it is tasty. This purple foliaged variety can be used to produce two great crops for eating. 
The deliciously sweet leaves are perfect for adding to salads, but the variety can also be grown for delectable baby roots. We suggest picking the leaves at about 35 days. Selected by Dutch Seedsmen and Seed Savers Exchange members, Keys Sahin in 1986 from the French variety Crapaldine for the darkest colored leaves. 35 days for baby tops, 55 days for edible roots. All right, let's see what we've got here now. So I've already done the Big Max. Let's do the Diablo, Diablo pumpkin. So that's just gonna be this little row. I'm just doing three of these. And these have gotta be about an inch deep. So I'm going, making sort of a wide slit, going down a good bit more. Now as soon, more or less, as soon as these germinate, I'm gonna pop them up into something bigger. Uh, I started, here we go. I started the Big Max pumpkins in here because those seeds are giant and they don't even really fit well in here. <laughs> so, uh, so I went ahead and just started them in the bigger cups. Um, but basically, as soon as I have germination on these pumpkins, uh, I'm going to pot them up. I am planting these horizontal. I know there's like one end you can do, if, if you can figure out which end is which, like the root will come out one way and the, but whatever, I'm just going to put it horizontally. That way the root can decide whichever way it wants to come out. The Diablo Medium Pumpkin. It's an F1 hybrid. 98 days. If your pumpkin program has been outfoxed, maybe it's time to get a handle on that by going to the devil. Tom Fox, with its massive stocky handles, has defined the trend in jack-o'-lanterns, but we think this devil has a more refined look. Diablo's strong four and a half inch stems are wide at the base and taper gently upwards. We liked its nicely rounded foxy fruit shape and its deep orange color. Its, inter its intermediate 12 to 22 pound size and its medium deep ribs semi-determinate vines. Pumpkins are so like gratifying to plant. <laughs> they're just, there's these big seeds that go in easy. They're not like little tiny itty bitty things that you can't see. Okay, three cornfield. And there's the seeds. Same thing, kind of a wide slit. The Cornfield Pumpkin, first offered by Seed Savers Exchange member Glenn Downs in the 1984 yearbook from the USDA Seed. This is our top choice for use as both a carving pumpkin and fall decorations. The fruits are flattened, light colored, and thin skinned and weigh about 12 to 15 pounds. The very sturdy stems rarely break off. It was traditionally grown as a companion crop planted with field corn. 90 days. Here we go. And they are in. Long Island cheese. Now, if I do a good job, each of these, each of these individual pumpkin plants should net me a couple of pumpkins. That is, if, you know, if they don't get predated, like if they don't get eaten on by the vine borers, or if the, um, you know, if they don't get some sort of fungal disease or something. Long Island Cheese Pumpkin. This East Coast historic variety, long remembered as a great pie squash by the people in New York and New Jersey, was mentioned as early as 1806 by Bernard McMahon of Philadelphia. Named for its resemblance to a wheel of cheese, the flattened, ribbed, buff-colored pumpkin with sweet, deep orange flesh, average six to 12 pounds. This variety is also a good keeper, 90 to 100 days. And really, like, how many pumpkins do you need? Okay, I've got, I've got four different kinds of pumpkin, the Diablo, the Long Island, 
the cornfield and the white lux, and those are just your regular pumpkins. Plus these others that are uh, sort of specialty pumpkins, and then the Big Macs. Like, I don't need to do six of each of these, right? Three is enough. That way if only two germinate, it's fine. Okay, Winter Lux. Winter Luxury Pie Pumpkin, 100 days, open pollinated. Back in 1988, when it was maintained only by the Young Seed Company in Michigan, Mark Fulford recognized that luxury was three to four times as good as pies for a New England pie. So beautiful that it breaks my heart to cut one open. Uniquely russeted, finely netted gold orange skin is beautiful. Joe Hiscock of Quebec enthuses, after making pumpkin pies for more than two decades, I will say with great conviction that winter luxury pumpkin is by far the best pie pumpkin. Best pumpkin-y taste, best color, best texture, best consistency. They have a rustic antique look and even grow into nice manageable sizes. Nothing unruly or watery. The ideal pie pumpkin. Vigorous finds. Bear globulous seven to eight pound fruits with juicy, tender, slightly sweet, pale orange flesh. Productive too, but somewhat delicate and are only fair keepers. Okay. The naked bear. And I am doing six of these because I want them more for their seeds than anything. So I'm going to go for a whole six of them. That way there will be plenty of seeds. Naked Bear Culinary Pumpkin. 105 days F1 hybrid. At first glance, it's a cute, squat, two to four pound orange mini pumpkin with thick stubby handles. Perfect for the toddler you pick market, you think. But hello, health conscious. What is this? Upon carving a tiny jacko smile, you discover sweet and nutty hullless seeds for roasting. And if you abandon your jack-o'-lantern altogether, extra culinary congratulations. You've got a perfect one pie portion of filling as well. Did autumn just get really awesome? You betcha. Productive petite papita pie pumpkin. Say that 10 times fast. This is the acorn squash carnival. The Carnival Acorn Squash, 85 days, F1 hybrid. Carnival will give your senses a thrilling ride. First, treating your eyes to a kaleidoscope of colors, each fruit flecked with shades of green, gold, and yellow. No two exactly alike. Then wafting to your nostrils with its nutty squash aroma as it bakes, finally thrilling your taste buds with its full-bodied sweetness. This semi-bush acorn type produces medium-sized fruits near the crown for easy picking. Jason Kafka reported outstanding success growing Carnival and Sweet Mama on landscape fabric. A marvelous seller at farmers, farmer's markets will store for many months. Note, color variation is a function of temperature. In high temperatures, Carnival will have less yellow and gold and more green. Butternut squash. Waltham Butternut Squash, 105 days, open pollinated. Elegant, nine inch tan fruits weighing four to five pounds. Orange dry flesh has a sweet nutty flavor. Excellent keeper. Bred by the Massachusetts Agricultural Extension Service and introduced by Bob Young of Waltham, Mass. One 1970s AAS. Continues to be Ann Elder's most dependable winter squash at Community Farm in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Caution, in cool summers, fails to ripen in northernmost areas. Nevertheless, our best-selling winter squash variety. Delica. This is the honey boat squash. Uh, I think that it's technically a summer squash. Actually, I don't really know. Um, but you don't, you don't have to cure it. You can just eat it straight. You don't have to. You can eat the skin, right? <laughs> it's not a pumpkin or a winter squash, technically, but it does take uh, 90 to 100 days. Honeyboat delicata squash. This gold orange 
This gold orange, green striped, delicata squash variety has an irresistible sweet, nutty flavor and stores well. Like all delicata squash, it can be prepared straight from the harvest without curing. Vines reach up to six feet long, while fruits measure six to eight inches in length and three inches in diameter, and weighing up to a pound. Bred by Dr. James Baggett at Oregon State University, Honey Boat was introduced in 1990 and has proved popular among squash lovers in the years since, 90 to 100 days. Oh, right. I knew, I thought we missed one. Okay, this is the long pie pumpkin. That's why I moved them from one spot to another, because I would forget. The long pie culinary pumpkin. Okay. 102 days, open pollinated. Probably an old Native American variety or selected therefrom. Various sources and strains have included Algonquin, Indian, Golden Oblong, and possibly St. George. The best pumpkin for Yankee pies. Though widely grown in Androscoggin County, Maine, 80 years ago, an old-timer remembers them stacked up on porches like firewood, it almost became extinct. Three to five pound fruits look like overgrown thick zucchinis to the uninitiated, but the telltale sign is an orange spot where otherwise would have been all green elongated fruit rested on the ground. After ripening in storage, the whole fruit blushes and then glows bright orange, signaling that its delicious smooth flesh is ready to be turned into incomparable pies. Your fork won't know where the whipped cream ends and the pie begins. Vines have enormous vigor and can achieve astonishing yields. Long pies stored at 50 degrees can keep all winter, germinates poorly in cold soil. At the end of the season, small immature fruit make tasty summer squash. Okay, and these are the Blue Hubbard. The Blue Hubbard squash is a New England favorite. I mean, look how big those seeds are. Not quite as big as the Big Macs, but those are big seeds. A less refined version was introduced by James Gregory of Marblehead, Massachusetts in 1856, but it had been grown in the area since the 1700s. It is not for those with limited space. Long vines produce good yields of powdery blue oval squash with hard shell and firm, dry yellow flesh, some in excess of 20 pounds. Storage qualities are exceptional, and of course, one will provide a number of meals. Okay, water and vermiculite. Uh, this soil is already pretty moist, so I don't have to like really moisten the soil too much. I really just want the soil to settle around the seed and let the seed get good and moist itself. These are gonna go on a heat mat. I gotta check out, I gotta check the beets actually. I think that they germinate at like 70 degrees, which will be fine. So they'll go on a heat mat with a humidity dome and we'll watch them for germination, which should be relatively soon. Voila, that's all I have for you today.